MC for today. Um, and uh, we try to start on time uh, so that we can end on time because people are typically coming during their lunch break. Hmm. If you have not yet, uh, and you would like to join us for Drupal Camp NYC, um, we are on the cusp of, uh, of uh, our annual Drupal Camp. Um, it's mostly uh, a uh, remotely attended event uh, this year again um, for the program. Uh, we are having an in-person social, um, uh, which uh, I saw in organizi organizing chat that Holing is going to be the one to show up early. Um, so uh, do you want to say anything about that, Holing? Join us. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I also don't want to take up too much time from a talk. So yep. like I said, okay. join us. It's going to be fun. Yep. So uh, go to uh, DrupalCamp.nyc. Uh, um, and follow the registration links and sign up um, and please join us. Um, if you would like to speak at a future lunch and learn, um, please let us know um, and you can email us or, or mention something in Slack. Um, as David said, he's moving back to Australia. Um, he's been a huge gift to us for which we're incredibly grateful helping us organize these. Um, uh, he's been the primary speaker coordinator um, uh, which predominantly consists of reaching out to people who on their registration said they'd be willing to speak um, and saying, so what would you like to talk about? What would you like to talk about? And filling out a spreadsheet and following up with emails. Um, uh, and so we will need someone to take his place. As, and if you're interested in that, you can join the organizers channel in Slack. Um, and uh, with uh, all of that, um, let's hear more about DigitalOcean. Okay, so I'm Leora Wenger, and I guess I will share my screen first. Let's see. Okay, so here we go. Um, so you can see it says adventures and multiples, right? Just everybody can see it. Okay, good. So this is a, a story about how I um, set up some sites on, on DigitalOcean, or actually two of the sites I'm in the process still of, of working on them but I'll talk about that. So who am I? I'm Leora Wenger. Um, I'm a Drupal developer at the New York MTA, and I do um, some WordPress development for blogs and small business. I actually learned WordPress before I learned Drupal. Um, and I learned Dru uh, WordPress by blogging. I, I learned Drupal because I got jobs at Rutgers and I kept getting jobs at Rutgers and they had lots of Drupal jobs. I'm um, a mom to three children, I'm a wife, and I'm a daughter to parents that are no longer here. And this is a picture of my daughter, Ilana, on the right and on the left of uh, the head covering, that's my daughter-in-law, Emily. And um, I showed it because it's, I also like doing photography besides doing art, so I thought that would be a nice picture to represent. And yeah, there's my neighbor's roses. And I live in Highland Park, New Jersey, so, um, that's where I am now. And, and they have these long, beautiful roads, so, um, sidewalks, and I like photographing all the flowers in town. All right, so what was the issue? Um, the issue was that um, I have two sites. Well, actually, I have two. It was sort of like three different sites. I have um, my old site is actually done in PHP, HTML, and CSS, and it still exists that way. And I did it in some um, older version of code. And, um, and I, then I have these two WordPress um, blogs and I wanted to move them. Uh, why did I want to move them? Because um, A2 hosting wasn't offering me, there wasn't an easy way for me to get, get a dev site and a, um, a staging site. And I didn't like, they, they weren't responding the way they used to and whatever, it was time to move on. So I did some investigating and um, yeah, so this is an example of, when, when you do set something up, you need uh, the new site needs tweaking. So there were a lot of things that I still have to change. Um, this is like me starting to move it to the new site. Um, so, uh, right, so I need a new site. So somebody told me about DigitalOcean at some point and I decided to try it out. And what do you do when you wanna move something live but you've never um, done it before? You get yourself a test site. So I had a friend that, um, she needs to make money. She had tried building sites herself. She didn't, wasn't that successful. 
And she has her um, all sorts of products all over different little stores all over the internet, like Redbubble and, and uh, Cafe Press and you know these various kinds of store sites. And they really needed to be in a co cohesive place. So um, I said, you know what, I'm gonna buy you a, um, I'm going to buy a domain name and I was just going to make a page for her. That was the original idea. I was going to have a page and I would just have a domain and all it would have was like cards that would link out to these stores. So it got kind of complicated, but this is, this is one of the pages that is actually built now. Like one of the things she does is um, she does these uh, fractions t-shirts and she makes math cards. That's a little bit of her kind of thing. But uh, the, um, the test site kind of took over the project for various reasons. I had someone else that's doing a political campaign and for various reasons, uh, um, he didn't have a lot of money. So I said, you know what, I'll make a web page for you on the site and we'll just throw it all in. Anyway, the whole thing got taken over. Um, I started off by using um, apps. So DigitalOcean has these apps and you can get one for free. So great, free sounds good, right? Then it has HTML and CSS. And I thought I'm doing this just this one page. Well, it didn't work out so well. All the, the file names have to be named .html. And, you know, it was only, uh, it turns out I'm only using CSS anyway, not doing SCSS or anything with this, but that, that's one limitation. And, and you basically have to write all the code manually. So anytime you want to, it's not a CMS. I mean, you know, anytime you want to make a small change um, and, and there turned out to be more changes than I originally thought. So, um, and I knew I also wanted to move these WordPress sites. So that was the other thing. And then the search engine issues also came up. So the apps didn't work. That was that was the problem. So here, here are some of my notes. I was trying, I was doing all these like branch checkouts and trying to figure out how to deploy the code. And you know, that it just wasn't working. So then I how to learn about how the droplets were. So the droplets, you can have a database. So if you have a database, you can do Drupal, you can do WordPress. Uh, I've heard of other people using DigitalOcean for Drupal sites. Um, I have not attempted that myself, but there it is, there's the possibility. Uh, it has this nice control panel that I'll show you later and it has monitoring on it and you can build these multiple, this was the really the key thing. You could build multiple sites with these virtual hosts. So that was a, a big plus. I didn't realize it would take a while. There, there was a learning curve with the virtual host, but um, you know, you get started and then you figure it out. So what are some of the cons with DigitalOcean? It's not quite clear how much everything's gonna cost. So like last month, my bill was like $12 plus $1 for the backup. I'm probably gonna need to expand that. So whatever, I'll, I'll have to figure that out. It, it, so far, it seems pretty manageable. And also, you know, I'm not used to doing server updates in the past. The, the web host took care of that. So, the, you know, there's things that I have to learn and I have to think of taking care of. So what's the benefit of these virtual hosts? So the virtual host is you can set up multiple sites in one droplet, and then um, the sites will have all the same tools. So they'll have the same PHP, the same ISQL, the same Apache, whatever the setup is there. And, you know, you can add the tools you need um, to, to the to the droplet. So, so here, what does a virtual host look like? So this is an example of one that I um, put together. Um, so it has, this is at the top, it, it's showing the directory. Um, these are kind of things that WordPress ended up needing. So like the basic one might not have that, I added that in. Um, whoops, let me go back. What just happened? Let me just get out of here, oops. I got to the wrong, this one. Okay, <laughs> back in here. Yeah, if you press the wrong button on these present things. Okay. Um, yeah, so, but you basically have to fill this out properly. Like there were a couple of times I made some, some little typos or, or set it up wrong. Like, um, so, it, one of the things that I learned in the beginning, I had this long, like I bought these extra domain names just to for test sites. And I bought one, rarentonvalleyweb.com, like just in case, okay, that sounds like one I might use. And I learned my lesson that was way too long. So that was why I went with this. Also, .com and .conf are really similar. So that, that was um, one thing that I, I learned to have an easier domain name for, for, you, for making your dev sites. 
Um, I also recommend when you set up a virtual host, you know, save it to a, um, a file somewhere on your laptop because then you don't have to go and look in to, to see how you set it up. Just kind of basically take a lot of notes. Like every time you want to log in, you have to do this SSH root add and you get have to have the XXXs for the numbers. Um, but there is a console I discovered later. <laughs> there's a console on the DigitalOcean panel. And we're at the very end, toward the end, I'll, I'll, we can take a look at that. So this was, I ended up buying Q123.us just because it was available and it was short. And I really, and that helped a lot just to, because you have to type that over and over and over again as you're setting these things up. And so the first site you set up, I called it my dev site. You know, that these are all in one droplet. And that's, those were basically my dev site. And this is how um, the DNS records look. So I got fairly familiar with DNS by doing this project. Um, let's see. Uh, so one thing that I learned kind of I, by accident um, was that if you have a domain and it's on DigitalOcean, it's not so simple, like you want it on one droplet and move it to the other. So don't destroy the droplet before you move it, like move it first. And there's kind of like, you have to make sure you get to the right place where you can take it off. Um, but I did discover that the support is pretty good, like actually very good. I mean, like you go in, the, you go in, you, you set up a ticket and you say, well, you know, what happened to my domain? I I destroyed the droplet before I could get to it and, and they responded. So they helped me, they helped me through um, some of that. That was kind of one of the issues where I kind of was scratching my head. What, what, what did I do with that domain? So this is an example of a, um, how a support ticket looks. And this is just this magical thing. This is my old blog, which I still haven't revived and it's going to look a little different, but it's so I could put my artwork up. So that's kind of my, um, it's, an, it's, this isn't so much to make money. I like, I, I'm working full time. So do I have time to take on small clients? That would be nice, but I really want to get my old art blog back up again. So that's, that's what I'm working toward. Um, so this is how I set up the, the dev staging production site. So I have, I have two droplets and the original droplet I use is kind of a dev site. And then right before, I don't really need staging very often. I mean, I've actually only used it once. So on what I would call the production droplet, I had one that I just, um, so I had the database and the files and I imported them all into um, the staging site and I called it mock stage. And so I did that right. So to make sure everything was right in place and on the same droplet, and then it wasn't like to using Unix to copy the files. It wasn't that hard to copy it over to the real site when I was ready to go live. So that was kind of my dev staging in production. And I ended up um, just deleting the staging once it was live because I don't really need it that much. Whereas the dev site comes in very useful. If you want to play around, you want to, you know, change the theme and change a plugin, you know, whatever you want to just play with it. It's very useful to have that still existing. Um, so these are some of the things that take time, you know, in general, like if you make a DNS change, you have to know it might take up to two days. Um, sometimes installations take a little while. Um, server updates, you know, I, I spent all this time, I remember, you have to bring down the whole droplet just to do the server updates and you, ha you have to do what's called the snapshot. I mean, not have to, but they recommend you do a snapshot. I also learned that you're really not supposed to keep those snapshots around because they cost money. So better to make them and then destroy them. And the backups don't really use snapshots. I think they uh, they might make them and then they do the backup of them. Um, and there's always just correcting mistakes. Like, you know, if you make a mistake to your virtual host and then learning new skills. So um, like SEP, different ways to copy files. I, I was kind of uh, working my way through, will this work or will that work? And this was a nice discovery on my, um, my newer droplet. There, there's this nice little console. So that was like 
So instead of doing that thing where you have to type in SSH and all those numbers, you can just click on this little console in the corner and you get this nice little terminal. So that was nice. And you can also tag your droplets. So I called one of them prod and one of them dev because sometimes if you end up with like using your name because they're both your sites and then you realize, wait a second, they look too, from, you know, too similar. So that way you can remind yourself which one is which, but that's very easy to do. Yeah, see here you can see the IP addresses that you get to know after a while because you have to type those a lot. And let's take a look at the DigitalOcean dashboard. I think I have it in here. So this is how it looks. And this is um, one of my droplets. Uh, okay, so let's see. I'm trying to get to the droplet itself. Okay. I click on here, then I get this nice little console and I click on it and that's where I can get to, and if I type LS, you can see what's there. And then I can go, this is when I, so all these virtual sites are, nope, it didn't do it. So, so then you can see these are um, the sites that I have set up. Like there's one called Mock Stage and there's one called test.highlandparknjnews.com. And the uh, the virtual hosts are studied in, uh, not studied, they're, they're stored in, in what's called the .com file. So they're elsewhere. So you kind of go back and forth between those and, and um, setting up your, your sites. And let's see, we can look at, um, this is the monitoring. So let's see what it looks like for the last 24 hours. So it looks like, you know, this is just an idea. You can see your sites. Well, not so much the sites yet. Yeah, I have analytics on the site itself um, to see like what pages they're going to. So this, this is just more of like what kind of load it's getting. And yeah, they have all these different uh, like backups. I actually did, uh, I, I decided to pay the $1 a month for the backups, just another another thing. So let's see what else, what, what else do we have to show you? Um, Oh, so one of my sites, I, I named it, um, I set it up in WordPress and I meant to do www.mock, I actually didn't give it much thought. And then I just think about this beforehand, like, do you want domain.com or www.domain.com? And, and then in the end, I said, you know what, it's working. I'm just gonna leave it for now. Um, but there's something called, um, like if you, you, you may be familiar with um, cert bots, so you have to, like sometimes your site doesn't work because you have to recertify the um, get the cert for the for the domain. Um, so so the HTTPS works properly, and um, yeah, there was a lot of changes that I that I would have to make. So decide that in advance. That's all. Uh, this is just my my friends. She makes these um, Sybil Luddington products. That's one of her things. Sybil Ludding. So who's Sybil Ludington? She was a teenage girl who woke the Patriots and learned to Paul Revere by riding all night and using a cudgel to knock on the doors. So I learned about Sybil Ludington, and that's one of the things in one of the sites. And another thing I learned is um, I've kind of learned this over the years um, with some of my Drupal work is um, a lot of times, you, you know, you're doing all these backups and you think, oh, I'm going to do my site that way. I, I would just use one of the backups that I've made over all these years. And it turned out a lot of times you want to like rebuild a site because you put in all these modules or, you know, or all these uh, plugins that you don't necessarily want. So you want to basically build in pieces. So that's kind of what I'm doing with my own sites. I'm, I'm actually not just migrating it, I'm rebuilding it as I go along. And um, yeah, so kind of make, I think about backup tools and that sort of thing. And this is one of the sites that I'm planning to rebuild. It's called biz.leorw.com. And um, I was telling David that I originally built it and I called it Websites for Small Biz. And people told me, oh, you should write for the customer. And I realized I want to write about tech. I didn't want to write about what the customer wants to hear. And the customer didn't want to hear about tech. So I, the Facebook page, I couldn't change. So I, there I could put in the you know Websites for Small Biz that is customer oriented or whatever. But here is where I plan, like in the future, once I get this up and running to, uh, if I do a tech talk like this, I can 
later post it as a post and, and write up, write it up there. Uh, so backup. So I already mentioned that they have these droplet backups, and then you can have however you do your backups within your um, within your Drupal or WordPress site. You can do it in there, and you know they have these snapshots that you can um, that can you can use if you need to make a copy of uh, your droplet as it is. And here are some more links for learning. I will post the um, slideshow to the Slack channel later. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. That's it. So. Nice job. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> let me know what you Thank want you to hear much. about. I think droplets are cool. Um, I've got a little droplet that I pay $5 a month for um, mm -hmm. that's uh, mostly static. Um, I mean, it's running a, an Ubuntu you know, standard instance. I've set up a small Apache server. Mm -hmm. and I just use it to put up links to uh, talks that I've given. Wow, interesting. Uh, uh, yeah. But it's five bucks a month. Uh huh. And uh, I like to do my talks in uh, Impress.js, so it's uh, not dependent on anybody's, you know, any company's technology. Because I'm using. That's good. I'm using I, I, I'd love to move away from. I you know. I used to use PowerPoint and Google Slides was a, you know, so what's the one that you use for? It's called, it's called Impress. Um, there's, okay. um, so somebody wrote a book about it uh -huh. years ago. Um, uh, it hasn't changed a lot over the years, um, right. but it, it, it mimics Prezi. If you've ever seen anybody giving him a, a, a talk with Prezi mm -hmm. where it, you can have an image and it zooms in and zooms out and zooms over, or you can just do slide, 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 slide. Mm -hmm. um, but you build your talk, and you build your slides in HTML and CSS, um, and it loads JavaScript, and then anybody can have it. They don't have to have uh, a particular, I mean, I, lo I love Keynote personally. And I think it's really well done, um, but if you're not, then I either have to export the slides as PDF or, somebody has to have a Mac and they have to be able to run Keynote or you have to mm -hmm. export it to some right. compatible format. Um, you know, Google Slides isn't necessarily open source, although it's collaborative. So just for stuff I'm doing myself, especially I'm usually, usually doing open source web technology talks. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like to build the talk in open source web tech. That's why I do that. But mm. for your talk, I use a droplet, it's five bucks. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and it's always five bucks every month. Um, it's a little tiny Ubuntu server. I do right, have to right. ma ma maintain it a little bit. Um, it's got a Let's Encrypt script that runs. It keeps the certificate. Right, current. right. That's one of the things I have to set up. Is... <laughs> yeah. But DigitalOcean has awesome documentation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they've been primarily US focused, but uh, uh, I, I like them. Good. I've used Linode for many, many years, and it seems like whatever uh, DigitalOcean does, uh, Linode copies and vice versa. So I've had, uh, they used to call them slices on, on Linode. I, don't, I guess they just call them Linodes now, but um, mm -hmm. I actually set up one of their $5 version ones. My son is a big uh, Minecraft um, kid. So um, he wanted to have his own server and I said, okay, for five bucks a month, I'll uh set you up your own server they they actually have um like uh pre-done formulaic stuff you can just click the button and it'll install it all but i i just did it manually just because i wanted to challenge myself a little bit um but yeah these things are kind of handy um especially for just playing around that's fun marvin it was uh the beginning of the quarantine i don't have kids but a lot of my friends do and i, I they all play minecraft so I did the same thing. I spun up a, a droplet on uh, DigitalOcean and installed Minecraft. But I think it was about a month later, I was getting like support tickets. You know, they're like, you need to install this mod and you need to die. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, they were not impressed quite... with my ability to install mods. I didn't even know what mods were. And they're like showing me crazy things. And I was like, I... Yeah, I've, I've, my son's got me into that too. So even though I really don't play... <laughs> I don't play with him on the Minecraft, but uh, 
but you know, just researching it and, and actually, I mean, he's 11. So uh, being able to kind of teach him how to do some of this stuff, I think is a good skill for him to, to have in the long run. I keep trying to push him to learn JavaScript so he could write, you know, some of the code to modify um, Minecraft itself, but you know, he, it's not, not, yes. not quite there yet. Yeah, but that's, I think that's why Minecraft's, you know, a, a fun game for kids to play. Like it, it has a lot of that opportunity just waiting, so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I learned, I learned how, to, how to administer Linux servers with these kinds of things. Back in the day, Slicehost was revolutionary. They were eventually acquired by Rackspace, but they were one of the first virtual private server. Here's a slice, <clears throat> configure it however you want. Um, it was pretty cool. So, so I've got a question. Um, sure. There men you mentioned dev stage in production. So right. does that when you um, does that come set up or that's something? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, in fact, like I, that would be great if I could figure out how to automate it. You know, that was one of the uh, but it's the learning curve thing. Ask me in a year, maybe I'll have figured out more. So for five right. bucks, no, it's just, just sort of yeah. For, I was gonna say for five bucks, they're not giving you everything. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. They give you um they give you enough to uh you know to be dangerous, right? So but I'm guessing you didn't have to install Linux Apache MySQL. Yeah, you that. do. Okay. Actually, there there was a one click way to do it, but that was one of my mistakes. I kind of messed up a whole droplet doing their one click way and then like, I don't even know what happened. And then I went through the slow method of installing it one by one and it was fine. Like, yeah. you don't have to do that part that often. Yeah. You know, once you set it up, it, it's done. So, um, yeah, I, I don't trust the one click ways either, the one click apps and all of that. I don't trust it either. I would prefer the slow and manual method of installing everything. Uh, well, I don't have to do that. Uh, I mean, um, I, I've kind of scripted my way around all of those things now. So it's it's a question of, okay, spinning up a new droplet and running a script and I have it all set up. But yeah. Um, not so I'll thing. attend your talk when you tell me about how to, how to script the things. Right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> certainly. I, have no, I don't even have a readme to that repository. So talk is, I guess it's it's a bit far off. Yeah. Okay. Is that an ant script you're saying? Sorry, what? Is it an ant script? Uh, no, it's it's not a script. You know, technically it's an Ansible module. Uh, it's a playbook. Okay. Um, so it's a thing that I maintain because I tend to do this quite often, you know, so I have a Terraform repository. For DigitalOcean, you don't really need Terraform. You know, it just set up one droplet. It has everything, right? But for things like AWS, Azure, you need multiple things. You need... Uh, um, you need EC2 instances and you need to attach storage blocks to that. And you probably need to put it in a network group and stuff like that. So, so for that, I have a Terraform and then Ansible to get it up and running, like install the server and uh, the PHP MySQL. I usually install Redis along with it. So that, so I have it, uh, it's a public repository, you know, it's, uh, I have always intended to document it better, but so far, <laughs> There's not even a single readme readme file to that. I'm happy to share the link though. You know, yeah, if, if you're interested. Oh, please. <clears throat> and we've got a meetup Slack channel just for things like this. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. I'll put my I'll put the link over there. Um okay. and uh, yeah, you know, it's probably not very usable. Like I said, there's not even a readme file. But uh, I'm happy to talk about it whenever, you know, yeah. Whenever. Then we've got to sign you up for a talk soon. Yeah. You know, I kind of vaguely remember talking about this in a previous meetup, uh, you know, um, I, like I kind of cross mentioning it, you know, I, I think it was a migration talk and uh, I, I had used this over there. So like I said, you know, I kind of use this now and again, uh, you know, every so often for whatever POC I want to spin up or whatever kind of experiment I want to spin up. It, it's simple for that. You know, I don't go to the, like setting up a platform or stuff, you know, uh, like an Acquia hosting or platform hosting for that. 
Uh, um, put, put together some demos and send us an email at speak at yeah. org and we'll uh, get you scheduled. Yeah, yeah, sure. Any other uh, questions about droplets or uh, interesting things uh, other people have been working on or things you've been wondering about? So, so just for me to understand the droplet, it's basically a, a simple way to set up a VPS. It is a VPS. Okay. Um, uh, and it, uh, as as they've alluded to, um, they have probably probably built on Ansible or some other task runner. They they have pre-configured. Um, you can have it as simply pre-configured as I want a droplet that's running Ubuntu 16.0.4. And that's all you get. Okay. Um, or you can have it you know, do other things. You can get fairly complicated. You can have you can have a droplet that's running uh, Mongo, and you can have a droplet that's running MySQL, or you can have and you can hook them together. Um, they have internal networking. And they don't have a lot of memory for five dollars. Um, you can get more expensive ones. Um, so that's probably why they call them droplets. Yeah, I did run out of memory. Pretty yeah. quickly, so right. <laughs> I had to bump um, it up a little bit, but um, I, I still know, have to bump more you, it up more the, when I put more sites on it. Yeah, the more you pay, the bigger droplet, the bigger, the more resources you get. For my static site, the five dollar one, it's fine. Uh, I was going to say, like on on Linode, the five dollar their five dollar version of it. If you try to run a full fledged Drupal uh, website, it it it's really really slow. <laughs> yeah. The the, yeah. the the ten dollar one maybe the twenty dollar one is is really kind of the minimum you really want to go with. Yeah, I only use my five dollar one for static, and before Slack was a thing, um, uh, uh, I had an IRC uh, watcher uh, little server running on there, watching the IRC channels that uh, I I used to use. That's no longer a thing. Now maybe it's worth having it to uh, like mine Bitcoin or something, you know, when those get so expensive, it's worth doing. <laughs> Another uh, really simple question, uh, yeah. HTTPS, was that difficult to set up there? Uh, no, it's not at all. You, you just have to use these uh, certbot commands. Okay. Um, I think that the hard part was, um, like, I'm trying to remember, like, sometimes if you make a mistake in how you set up the virtual host, so you have to redo the entire thing and you have to do the cert bot again. And I think that was one of the issues where I, I was like, how come I can't access it anymore? And it was because I had to redo, kind of had to renew the cert, like it was set up in the old way. But you know, there's like there's plenty of documentation. So um, you know, just you're typing sudo certbot, sudo renew, sudo blah 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 blah. Um, so I have long lists of all these commands, and I you know to do them. And you know, they have a um, besides just the you know you don't have to use the support tickets. They have forums. So a lot of times they'll just ask kind of generally on the forum, and you know they answer within a day and. Um, so if you want to get the right um, the right commands for those, and yeah, after a while, because I was like using these in the beginning, I was using these longer domains, and then I was using subdomains, and then I kind of lost track of all the different domains I was trying. So now I'm getting all these like your your certificate is about to expire, and and then I asked them a question like I don't have to pay attention to this because I didn't end up using that one. <laughs> like okay, so it expired. I don't have a site on it. I really only have one live site, so it's not a big deal. So yeah, but yeah, it's it's all just learning and and um, you know it's always kind of trying to find other people that are learning the same thing at the same time is kind of nice, but haven't gotten to that point yet. Any other topics or questions today?
All right. Um, thank you very much, Laura, for uh, share, Laura, for sharing your experience with uh, droplets. Thank um, you. Thank you for we, the opportunity. We very much uh, want to have some sort of constructive discussion in this time space every month. Um, uh, we would be very grateful if any of the rest of you have something you'd like to share. Um, or, and if not, um, if you have a question you'd like answered or a topic you'd like to see us discuss at Lunch and Learn, you also can post that in Slack and we can try and see who we have in the community who might want to give a talk about that. Um, well, I, I might just say thank you if that's okay, Sean. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to be, hoping this is not my last uh, time with New York. Uh, uh, the NYC um, Drupal. Um, but I just want to say thank you for being my community because I'm a long, long away, distance away in Peru. And I was just really grateful to find a group of people who also love Drupal. And I've learned a lot of things. So last week, I, um, in our last meeting, I just shared one of the little tips with contextual filters that I learned in a meeting that made one of my sites just so much, so much simpler. Um, and other little things like updating to Composer too. Um, it's just been very helpful having a community where I could ask questions and, and learn a lot from. So thank you. And uh, I hope to see you guys next month as well. But in December, once I'm in Australia, day is night and night is day. So it's a little bit complicated <laughs> connecting. Um, but I'm sure we'll connect, I will connect in again. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to hear the community has been that for you, David, um, you've been a gift to us. And uh, I'm where I am in Drupal because of the generosity of people at Drupal NYC sharing with me the things that they knew. And uh, that's why it's important to me to continue to make that possible. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it's been a pleasure getting to know you, David. And Best of luck in Australia. I was putting together. I knew you'd always joined us from a long distance, so I was hoping that would continue. But the other day and night, things gonna be rough. So I do hope you can pop in every now and then. But yeah, it's, at least it's at least come awesome by and game. say hi in Slack, because we can we can chat in Slack asynchronously. Definitely. All right, all right. Thank you, everybody. Um, uh, we don't need to um, sit and stare at Zoom. No one was uh, looking at silent. So. Uh, See you in Slack and uh, let us know what other content you'd like to hear. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, Bye. Thanks. Bye.